Howdy folks, Epping Controller here, back with more Uncharted Waters, New Horizons, playing as Ali. We have a boat full of cheese and some and, and a heart full of dreams. And we're going to take both of those on um, our ship and sail through these Uncharted Waters to uh, a port in South America. Taking our cheese all that way. It's like, like I was saying with... Uh, fish and grain in the previous episode. Cheese is, is just a ridiculous thing to trade in. It's one of those things where I, I can imagine as a, a young, you know, as a child playing this game, getting really frustrated that the game even has this as something you can trade because you'll, you'll get it and you'll be like, well, I can't take this anywhere and sell it. Unless you think, oh yeah, South America loves cheese? I don't know. I don't know what the game expects, you, how it expects you to puzzle that out. With that said, cheese is not very expensive, so if you do make the mistake of buying it, then it's not that terrible. But uh, my next port, you know, actually, it's going to be okay. I was going to say I should think about uh, buying a new ship. Getting to the point where our Caravella Latina, this guy, he's just parked here. I see you. It's a good indication that I should see. Anyways, what was I talking about? Yeah, we're getting to the point where we need to think about buying a new ship. I'm not thinking about buying anything fancy. In a perfect world, I'd be doing this in a La Real. It's my favorite ship in the game. It's the best. I love them. They're pretty easy to get. I could have checked a couple of ports before leaving Europe uh, as far as getting a new ship, but it's not that urgent yet. I'm looking at my list, and I can make it to this next port with relatively little trouble. <laughs> should not have said that. I should have also resupplied in Madeira. I wonder if I can make it. You know what? Let's go for it. If I hadn't backtracked there, I might have had better luck. So we need to hit Cayenne for sure. We need to make it there. Absolutely. We might run a little bit low on food. What we're going to do... Just because I goofed up. I'm going to ration my food and water. So this is my men's fault. And that's going to double our existing range. So we'll have about two weeks worth of food. Now you'll see on the bottom left, there's that uh, icon with the, the dude flexing. Weird flex, but okay, as the, as the millennials say. I'm a millennial and I guess I say that. But anyways, uh, he's going to start losing that percentage there. If that gets below 25%, I believe, my crew will start to die. And uh, that's that 100% rating that's directly above that. But it's not going to be a problem. We're fine. Old Cap Neffing probably didn't need to starve his crew. Yeah, we definitely didn't. Uh, we're going to... Oh, wait, no, but... Wait, yeah, that did nothing. We're still eating one food. Oh, wait, we didn't eat one food that day. Whatever. We're, we're in Cayenne. It doesn't matter. Everybody's fine. Uh, before I do too much here in port, I'm going to make sure that uh, my rationing is turned off. And I think when, I haven't messed with this too much just because I feel like it's kind of cruel. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just kind of a big softy. But um, Cayenne is not the port where I'm selling stuff to. I have to remember that because I have something else I want to do here first. But um, I think that it'll only go down to 50% for that flex rating. Oh, it's not available here. I, I wanted to check the cafe here because I think sometimes there's a captain you can recruit. Nope, not at least in the cafe. Let's check the lodge. This is not how you do that. It's the wrong way to do that. Okay. Well worth our time and effort. Let's get out of here. That was... Oh boy. <laughs> having, a, having a great time navigating through all these menus. There we go. Okay, so we're going to Pernambuco. So yeah, we were actually below 50%. If 
But now, as we nourish our crew, you'll see that number is going to start to go up. It goes up by 2% a day, I think. It's kind of brutal, but... That's why you shouldn't probably starve your crew. Well, amongst other reasons, I guess. Pernambuco is our next port. It's a fine port. It has some really good armor that you can buy in the item shop. Is it armor or... No, it's it's a it's a weapon that you can buy, but uh, that is way too expensive for us right now. We're not even gonna think about it just yet. We're just gonna think about selling our humble ship load of cheese for fifty gold. Wonderful. I mean, it's Greek. I guess it would be feta, mazithra, perhaps. Anywho, we're buying tortoise shell here in the fine port of Pernambuco. It's a trade good that you can reliably sell for a profit in Europe. Uh, where else? Pretty much everywhere other than areas where it is produced. 62 gold pieces is fine. We're gonna do that whole 70 lots of tortoise shell. We'll make quite a bit of money off of this. So that'll be nice. But it sells for a profit in Europe generally. I'm just looking at my chart. Okay. Iberia, Northern Europe, Mediterranean. Not in North Africa so much and not in the Ottoman Empire so much. All right. to remember to stop in Madeira <laughs> or something someplace just to keep the old crew from dying they have a bad habit of doing that from here I'm just gonna sail to the northeast until I hit that edge of the world thing that happens they have the round earth uh, society in this game but uh, this is a flat earth we're not going to sail over that, though, because bad things will happen. We won't sail off the edge of the world, but that's right around where storms are likely to hit, and it would be just my luck to sail off into that and then immediately hit a storm. Just about time to turn. I'll do it now. Splendid. Should be just fine. <laughs> just in case it's not, though, I'm gonna save the game. Dira should be coming up any moment now. Any moment. There we go. Just about nailed it. That's one thing that it's hard to hard to replicate. When you first play this game and you say, all right, I'm gonna sail to America. I don't know how that's gonna work. You know, it, it's, it's honestly, it really stirs up a lot of suspense. It was a very, uh, it, was, it was a kind of a cool sensation when I was playing this the first time as a, you know, I think I was about 10 years old and being like, all right, let's go to America. And you just don't know how long it's going to take. It, it replicates in microcosm, I'm sure, the, the sense that uh, a lot of these explorers must have had when they were trying to head that way. And they're like, well, probably going to be there in like a month, I guess. I don't know. Hopefully it works out. We're going to Bristol, and we're, we have legitimate business there now. We aren't going to be investing. Hopefully, we're not going to be investing, because if I do have to invest there, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to have to kill time, because it's my next my next port on the route. I would have to retool everything, and it would be quite difficult. As a matter of fact, I think it would be almost impossible for me to do anything other than just wait. 
So let's uh, make sure. Actually, let's check. Oh, it's 350 that it has to go to, isn't it? Oh boy, we'll see. Okay, we've got it. I, I guess I needed to only raise it by a little bit. It needed to be at like 375, I think. I'd have to check. They they are selling tin ore though, so thank God we're fine. Uh, 132 for our tortoise shell. That's wonderful. Joyous news. And uh, we're gonna buy that tin ore, the aforementioned tin ore. That's an acceptable price. Now tin ore is a lovely trade good because it trades profitably in its immediate area. In fact, Northern Europe is where you can get the best prices for tin ore. You can get better prices purchasing it elsewhere in like Southeast Asia, but uh, it's hard to sell there. So, I mean, what are you gonna do? Uh, Southeast Asia also requires investment to get it. So, this is as reasonably, uh, this is as good of a place to get it as any. Meanwhile, we're gonna uh, not resupply the ship. We don't have that far to go. We're not gonna make a ton of money selling our tin ore, but it's a quick trip. We're gonna be taking it over to London. I don't know, would it be faster to take all this tin ore by boat? I'm sure it would be. You can load up a boat with quite a bit of tin ore. As opposed to a wagon, a wain. Not a Garth. and eight just a quick easy profit and from here I'm going to be buying wool and I should be able to get a really good price on this if I tackle them down I think it'll be 48 or 49 48 wonderful I'm gonna fully load the ship I don't have that far to go And at this point, I will be starting to look, you know what, what better place to start than here. I should start looking for a new ship because the next port that I have to go to, I can kind of use that trick that I was talking about before of sailing down past over the edge of the earth, <laughs> past the west coast of Africa to avoid storms, get into the Caribbean. But then I have to go deeper into the Caribbean to a point where I can't avoid storms and if i can't avoid a storm i need to at least have the durability to survive one if i happen to get into a tight spot and uh, i just need to weather it unfortunately none of those ships interest me um, the caravella redondas are not a meaningful upgrade to this the toilette not at all it's terrible and uh oh yeah we don't have any resupplies to make so yeah, I'm not going to worry about it then. I'm going to pop over to Antwerp. Antwerp has a decent shipyard. So it might have a ship that I want. What I'm really looking for is a sloop. Sloops are a really, really good ship. Kind of as your second ship. I could also get a pinnace. That's a pinnace. Is that what you think? Those are a slight upgrade. I don't know if they're really worth it. We'll see what they have and we'll kind of debate oh they have a la real but it's too expensive Forty thousand. i simply can't afford it i wonder i'm gonna try something and i haven't ever really done this in the game before just because it's generally very easy to make money uh, I haven't ever bothered taking out a loan. Oh, I don't have any money in my account. I, I, what I need to do is borrow. One th <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I come in and I'm like, uh, hey, can I borrow some money? And they're like, yes. Go fuck yourself. That's, that's your credit line, is go fuck yourself. You can borrow exactly go fuck yourself dollars. 
man. <laughs> I guess I won't be buying a La Riel. <laughs> that was a La Reality check right there, I guess. We're gonna stop in some other ports along the way to our next one. I don't know what your credit line is based on. I don't know if it's based on your trade fame. Because uh, again, I don't, I've never borrowed in this game. And I don't think I ever will because <laughs> they were very rude to me. And uh, I don't, uh, I will remember that forever. Stop in not, not is not, not is not a very uh, good port at the start of the game, at least as far as building ships. I don't think it is anyway. Maybe it'll have something. But some, I think if anywhere it's, it could have it, it could have it. We'll, we'll just check. It's a decent port, a pinnace. Uh, how much are these? How much is a pinnace? <laughs> anyway. So it's not that much of an upgrade in terms of durability, which is really what I'm looking at. Even though the flavor text there is saying you can fight pirates if you maneuver it carefully. Uh, the best way to fight pirates in this boat is to run away and maybe shoot at them a little bit as you're running away. Because it's fairly fast. You can see that that... I haven't really sussed out how the game tracks the actual speed of the ships while they're sailing, but uh, I know that higher number is better, basically, when it comes to the, the, you know, the circle arrow and the arrow piercing the sail. The one on the bottom just indicates how... Um, how fast you sail generally, and then the, the 95 is its maneuverability, and I think that that comes more into play in combat. I could be wrong about that, but in any case, uh, the pinnace is not really something that I'm terribly interested in. We'll see how much it costs. I can bring 6,000 is not that much, though. Uh, what would be the advantage of this? Uh, it has 40 crew, which I could reduce to 10 and sail it quite fine, and then I could remove the cannons. That would give me... 45 more cargo space. That would give me 140. That's not that much of an upgrade. 6,000, I could bring that price down. I'm just, I'm not feeling it. It doesn't seem quite worth it. It's the same as our ship, except uh, with red sails is the gist of it. So I'm going to leave. It would be, it would be a, a modest upgrade. I don't really feel like it's worth it. A sloop, on the other hand, you want, you want to get a sloop. make sure I don't starve to death. The inventory of ships changes from month to month, I believe. So it's November 9th. We're not going to really have an opportunity to check out too many other or to, you know, recheck after the month rolls over. So I'm, I'm just going to go to a couple ports here. We hit Bordeaux here just before 8 o'clock before the shipyard closes. And they're taunting me with the La Real. They're kind of hard to find early in the game. It's unusual to see two ports with it so easily, but... <sighs> Can't have that yet, I guess. It's fine. I'm, I'm okay with it. I'll check out my um, next destination of Lisbon. That's where I'm going to be buying trade good or my next trade good. Huh. I could check Seville as well. I might do that first. We'll head down to Seville and then head up to Lisbon if it's not there. We have to go to Lisbon anyways, I guess. But um, if it's not in Lisbon or Seville, we'll just not worry about it and try our best. Sloops are one of the best ships in the game, though. They're they're uh, excellent ship for adventuring. And they're actually pretty good for trade. They're fast and... They have a reasonably good cargo capacity for really, really, really low overhead. They can be sailed with just 10 crew, so that means you don't have to carry as much food and water. Especially if you're me and you're a jerk. I was uh, going to trade there, but I don't need to do that. It's Seville, not Lisbon. There it is. Fantastic. Okay, now look. The... Now look here, <laughs> I'm getting stern with you guys. It has a really good maneuverability and speed rating. It has 38 
uh, durability. And I think my ship now has 27. Has 40 uh, slots for crew, which can be reduced to 10. It can get rid of the cannons. So that increases its already sizable cargo cargo capacity, that's hard to say, of 195 to 240. So um, that's doubles my cargo capacity. And I will happily buy this. I don't know how much it costs, though. 1600 <laughs> Well, I do have a ship full of, what do I have? I have nothing right now. Oh wait, no, I have wool. That's right, I have wool. Um, but I can haggle this down, first of all. Uh, we're gonna try 12. He's not gonna go for 12. Okay. We'll try 13 and that's probably, probably gonna be it. I can't remember. That there's a percentage, basically, of what the shipyard will... Damn it. <laughs> there's a percentage, what I'm trying to say. Oh, my God. You guys, <laughs> I'm having a terrible time here. I'm just trying to do my best. And it's not good enough. I just can't... Just completely curtailed by this menu. I want to buy this. I do not want to pay 16,000. I want to pay 13. <laughs> it doesn't even like it anyway. <laughs> okay. You know what? I'm going to go 13,5. Maybe our our nightmare will be over. I do want to buy it. I do not want it for 16,000. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I've got to name it. Uh, when I have played as Ali in the past, I usually like to name his ships after words in Turkish. Um, just because I think it's a cool sounding language. But I don't have, I don't have Google Translate up, so I'm just going to call it Reggie. I don't know. Hey, Reggie! called it something worse like Keith Ugh. so I can sell my existing ship and I can do I can do all kinds of stuff here you're gonna learn a lot about how to transfer cargo I guess <laughs> we're gonna load our food and water over our wool bring that over to Reggie and without even remodeling it this is just a fantastic ship Oh, I'm done. I need to transfer my crew. Because I don't intend on keeping the, the Savani as, as, as nicely as it has served us. We have no further use for it. And so even with... I could have five crew on this ship, apparently, and be able to sail it perfectly fine. It is the... I think it might be the easiest or one of the easiest ships in the game to sail. Light galleys or talets. Things like that might be easier, but they're trash, so you don't ever want to have them anyways. But, um, generally speaking, at least. What do I want to do? I want to sell the Savani. I could sail with two ships, but the whole purpose of this is to have a durable ship now. It'll give us... The, the whopping sum of 1200 I don't think I can negotiate that at all. So I'm just going to take it. And now I'm going to remodel. And it might be kind of expensive to remodel this ship. But it's going to be worth it in the long run. 1600 That's actually not that bad. So yeah, I could technically sail this with five. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to sail it with ten. Just because that makes me feel weird. Uh, 240 cargo is totally fine. If I reduce that by five, it would make almost no difference. Um, I am going to see if... I don't think I'll get any more speed improvements by allocating more to navigation. But So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to allocate 70% navigation, 30 to look out. Just because I find it kind of annoying that I have to sail right next to a port to discover it. So there we go, we've got that. 
I'm gonna go to the cafe real quick too because, uh, well, first of all, this is what I want to do. I need to appoint Salim as my first mate again because he was technically the captain of the ship that I just bought for a little bit. When you have, when you buy a new ship, your your first mate becomes the um, becomes the captain of that new ship, and then once you sell that ship or transfer yourself over to it. He's no longer automatically your first mate. It's handy to have a first mate because they will warn you about your uh, about storms coming in. So we want that. We're gonna need that particularly in our next uh, part of uh, this journey here. I want to go over here. And none of these guys are hireable. No big deal. Let's go to Lisbon and sell our wool. We'll be even a little bit faster in this. I, I shouldn't... I wonder if he'll let me leave without resupplying. Perfect. Because I'm only going to Lisbon, so it's not a... Not a problem. And now we're sailing in style. All right, Lisbon. Back to trading now. Which is over here. <laughs> Took me a second. Having a sip of coffee at 4.12 p.m. It's my weekend and uh, I don't know how to make it work. <laughs> it's kind of tricky on Graveyard because you have two days off like me and you try to maintain your schedule. It sucks. Um, 72 for the market rate on wool. Is that... Forty-eight. Okay. I, wow. I. Why well, you gotta write this stuff down, guys? Don't be like me. In so many ways, don't be like me. Wonderful. So we bought our wool or sold our wool. We're gonna be buying uh, arms. Just a big old bucket of arms. Rock salt is the local specialty, but I believe we've already traded that. But we need arms. And I can buy 142 or 136. So uh, I can buy how much? I can't fill my boat up. That's gonna be interesting. Um, let's buy 90. I got a little bit of a trip ahead of me. Let's go to the ship or to the harbor. And see how much food and water that'll get me. Okay, that would fill up our ship. Uh, so I could have bought more. I'm not gonna fully load it because I'm just gonna load 40 and 40. I don't need lumber, what am I doing? Lumber actually may not be a terrible idea to buy. You can repair your ship with it, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, I'm gonna worry about um, sailing to my next destination in the next episode. Catch you then.